If you left Earth right now and tried to fly to the Andromeda galaxy, you wouldn't just die before you got there. You'd die, your species would go extinct, the sun would burn out, and the Earth would be dust, and your ship would still be nowhere close. A lot of people think someday we'll visit other galaxies, like we'll build a faster rocket, slap on a cool name, and boom, off we go. But that's not how it works. Even calling it a trip is funny. It's like calling a single drop of water a swim. The truth is, the distance to Andromeda is so extreme, our brains can't really picture it. But let's try anyway. Andromeda is the closest big galaxy to us. Not the closest thing, that would be some nearby stars, but the nearest galaxy similar to the Milky Way. It's about 2.5 million light years away. That number sounds harmless, but a light year isn't time, it's distance. It's how far light travels in one year. And light is the fastest thing in existence. It moves at 300,000 kilometers per second. So a light year is about 9.5 trillion kilometers. Now multiply that by 2.5 million. You get around 24 quintillion kilometers. That's a 24 followed by 18 zeros. Your brain can't imagine that. Mine can't either. It's like trying to count sand grains in the Sahara. So when we say Andromeda is 2.5 million light years away, we're basically saying it's stupidly far. The fastest thing humans have ever made is NASA's Parker Solar Probe. It moves at around 700,000 kilometers per hour. That's so fast, it could go around the Earth in under three minutes. Pretty good, but let's see how long it'd take to reach Andromeda at that speed. It would take around four trillion years. For comparison, the universe itself is only about 13.8 billion years old, so it would take about 300 times longer than the age of everything. By the time your spaceship got halfway there, galaxies would have merged, stars would have died, and whatever was left of Earth would be long gone. What if we could go faster? Let's imagine a ship that could move at 10% of light speed. That's around 30,000 kilometers every second. At that pace, the trip would still take 25 million years. 25 million years? Back when that much time had passed on Earth, our ancestors weren't humans. They were apes. If they'd built a rocket back then and launched it toward Andromeda, it still wouldn't have arrived yet. That's how far we're talking. But what if we hit light speed? Okay, fine. Let's break physics. Let's say you somehow reach the speed of light. You'd finally make it there in 2.5 million years. That still sounds terrible and also impossible. Anything with mass can't reach light speed. Because as you speed up, you gain energy and your mass effectively increases. To hit light speed, you'd need infinite energy. And infinite energy doesn't exist. It's like trying to make your car go faster by feeding it infinity liters of gas. You can write it down, but you can't do it. So what about sci-fi? Here's where people usually say, what about warp drives or wormholes? Yeah, let's talk about that. A warp drive, like in Star Trek, doesn't technically make you move faster than light. It bends space itself, shrinking the distance between two points. You're not going faster, you're making the road shorter. Sounds clever. The problem? You'd need an absurd amount of energy to do it, like more than what all the stars in the galaxy produce combined. Right now, that's not science. It's math doodles and imagination. And wormholes? Same issue. They might exist in theory, but if they do, they'd collapse instantly. And anything trying to pass through would be turned into spaghetti. So for now, we're stuck crawling. Even if you could somehow move fast, you've got another problem. Space hates travelers. You'd face deadly radiation, temperature swings from boiling to freezing, and tiny dust particles hitting your ship like high-speed bullets. At just 10% of light speed, a single grain of sand could blow a hole through your hull. Then there's food, oxygen, and boredom. You'd need a ship that could keep people alive for millions of years, basically a floating city passing stories from one generation to the next. And even then, their great-great-great-grandkids would still be staring at the same empty blackness. It's not a journey. It's a sentence. But you don't have to go to Andromeda. It's coming to you. Andromeda is actually moving toward the Milky Way at about 400,000 kilometers per hour. In around 4 or 5 billion years, the two galaxies will collide and merge. Astronomers even have a name for it, Milkdromeda. The night sky will look wild, millions of new stars lighting it up. But don't get too excited. You and I won't be around to see it. By then, the sun will be burning out. Earth will probably be uninhabitable. So yeah, 
technically Andromeda will come to us, but we'll be long gone. Talking about Andromeda isn't about travel. It's about scale. We live small lives. We measure distance in meters, kilometers, miles, a road trip, a flight, maybe a year abroad. Space doesn't care about any of that. Its numbers are so huge, they stop feeling real. You could go as fast as anything humans can imagine, and space would look at you and say, cute. But that's what makes it amazing. It's humbling. It reminds you that you're standing on a tiny rock in a quiet corner of an enormous universe, and yet somehow, you can still see another galaxy. That's not nothing. Here's a thought that always blows my mind. When you look at Andromeda, you're seeing light that left 2.5 million years ago. You're literally looking into the past. Now flip that around. If some alien in Andromeda was looking back at Earth right now, they wouldn't see you. They'd see the planet as it was 2.5 million years ago, before cities, before humans. Maybe they'd see early humans using stone tools, or maybe they'd just see forests and animals. So when we look at each other across galaxies, we're looking across time, not just space. That's one of the strangest and coolest parts of physics. Let's put those numbers in perspective for a second. The Parker Solar Probe, the fastest thing we've ever launched, would need around 4 trillion years to make it. Even if you built something that could cruise at 10% of light speed, you'd still be looking at roughly 25 million years of travel. Go full light speed, if that were possible, it'd still take 2.5 million years. And if you're the patient type, you could just wait about 4 billion years because Andromeda is slowly drifting our way anyway. When you hear numbers like that, you start to realize space doesn't care how fast we think fast is. No matter how you slice it, we're not going. Even light needs millions of years to get there. So the next time someone says maybe humans will visit other galaxies one day, you can tell them we'll visit when the universe slows down. You'll never reach Andromeda, but you can look up tonight and actually see it with your eyes. A tiny blur in the sky, glowing faintly in the dark. That light traveled 2.5 million years through nothingness just to reach you. That's not failure, that's connection. Across space, across time, across everything.